Twitch recording? Hell yeah, it is. Oh, this is hella off, bro. Oh my god, I already start this off like shit. Kaneki, can you help me out here? Alright. A lot has happened since the last vlog, so we're gonna go through a nice little run through. There's been a pretty decent amount of events that I've shot and a good amount of photo shoots that I've also shot. I'm still not as busy as I would like to be with my workload throughout the week, but it's definitely increasing and I definitely like the way that it's all going. So first things first, I've been looking to get a longer focal length lens and I really want a 500 millimeter, but they're in the ballpark of anywhere between like $7,000 and like $15,000 depending on the one that you want. And that is not feasible for me at all, uh, at least yet. Maybe later on when I get, you know, better workload all the time and I, you know, I'm shooting up more serious motorsport events uh, in which I need a lens like that for certain tracks. But the tracks that I mainly go to, this next lens I'm about to show you that I personally just picked up to fix my issue, works perfect. This is my new Nikon Decor 300mm. Uh, it has an f-stop at 4 and uh, it's awesome. It's like the perfect focal length. It's Sometimes it even feels like it's a little too close. Uh, it's a prime lens, so then I have to move, you know, my location rather than the actual zoom on the lens. But it's fantastic. I think it's like almost a perfect focal length for a lot of tracks. I've shot this at Palmer, I've shot this at Pocono, I've shot this at uh, English Town for Club Loose, and it's perfect. For those long shots that I was not able to get before, this is perfect. I'm so happy I picked this up. I got this from Unique Photo in Philly. They had it sitting there, brand new, and I couldn't have asked for a better deal. Uh, I called them up, picked it up like within the hour from me calling them after doing a bunch of research to finding out that this is the lens that I want. And uh, I love it. It's the best purchase I've made in a while, besides the next one that I'm going to show you, which I'm super hyped about. There's two photographers at Club Loose that primarily shoot film, and I thought that their work was really awesome. Uh, it has a very nostalgic look to it and it's just very raw and I really fuck with it. It's, it's super dope. So um, after seeing Kevin and Eva's work, I absolutely had to go get a film camera of my own. I think what really tipped it was um, Eva posted these awesome panning shots at Club Loose and I thought it was sick because uh, panning shots aren't easy and being an automotive photographer, it takes a, a level of skill. And with digital photography, you know, you take the picture and you can change your exposure by going back and looking at what the, you know, how it looked. You know, oh, it's too exposed or oh, I want more motion. She's just going out there and essentially kind of just like raw dogging it with, you know, film. You take the picture, you don't know what it looks like. You're going off a light meter. And I was like, that is the absolute coolest thing ever. So uh, I had to go out and get one myself. This is my new, <laughs> well, not new, but new to me. Nikon F3 HP and I love it. So I run my 80-200 2.8 Nikon Nikkor lens. Uh, that's actually a 1985 lens that I use on my Z7 and my D810. Um, it's perfect on here. It's It's got an aperture ring so I can change the aperture. Uh, I love the 80-200 focal length on any lens, on any camera. It's amazing. Eventually in the future I would like to get a 70-200 for my Z7. Now I can shoot film and it's sick. Uh, I shot it at Palmer Motorsports Park. Uh, that's the first actual automotive event that I shot film. A couple rolls of Kodak Gold and Portra 160. Unfortunately at the lab, uh, a couple of my rolls of Portra didn't make it. Um, I think there was an issue on my end. Uh, the motor drive batteries died and I thought that, you know, if the actual camera battery was good, the motor drive battery wasn't. I took the motor drive off and I manually did it. Then it would still work, but apparently I blew through two 35mm rolls of Portra 160 and they weren't exposed at all. So uh, it's just a learning curve of things that I now know and I will fix for the future. And I know not to waste my film <laughs> because it's very expensive these days. I picked up a roll of double film uh, bubble gum for $16.99 for a single roll. So this is definitely something I do not want to waste at all. However, I really enjoy shooting it, so uh, if I learn how to use it better, uh, it's obviously going to be better. I mean, that's common sense, but, you know, I'm kind of slow. So, Also, with the film photography, I've kind of been looking for inspiration other places. Also, not only uh, Kevin and Eva from Club Loose, 
uh, but I've also, my buddy Nick Thompson shoots film, uh, that's his kind of primary outlet. He does digital too, but he really shines with the film, and uh, I've seen his work flourish over the years, and I really love it. Uh, as far as going online, you get more information about different film stocks and things like that. i watching different YouTube channels. My absolute favorite so far has been Grainy Days. Uh, a bunch of information, constantly new things going on. I think I could search any film stock and he has shot it on there. Uh, and the absolute dry sense of humor uh, makes the video so much better. So I enjoy it. A couple events that I've shot. Uh, I've pretty much shot every single Club Loose event. You know, East Coast Bash, which was pouring raining the whole time, which I love shooting in the rain. Uh, I know a lot of you guys know that if it is raining and you book a shoot with me on a rain date, I'm super hyped because I feel like the rain makes everything look better. It makes it more vibrant at nighttime. Uh, the rain gives a cool little, like, foreground, background kind of, you know, you just got to work with it. Um, and it's just happened to be something that I enjoy. So I feel like uh, the photos I took at East Coast Bash are sick. I mean, not necessarily because of my work. I know I still have an absolute huge amount of progression I need to make before I feel like my photography is actually at par when I want to be. I think that the look of the rain and wetness everywhere with it being as bad as it was is just different. You know it takes uh, an event or a track and cars that normally I would shoot and now that whole situation is different which brings a nice you know change of normality uh, with the whole situation. You know, obviously every event I try to shoot differently at different angles and I just try to experiment a little bit, but just having it, the, the weather situation being completely different uh, was like a nice breath of fresh air in a way. Um, the event was sick, it was raining the whole time, but the drivers were still, you know, absolutely thrashing the track and it was awesome. And, you know, we love that kind of energy and they kind of always put on a good show, every driver there, no one goes there and complains, they just go, you know, and that's, that's awesome. And, uh, you know, obviously us as media, we appreciate that because, you know, we go out there on the track and we're soaking wet and you guys are out there doing the same thing and it's just dope. It's, it's, it's all in the culture and drifting is sick. Uh, I'll, I'll say that too. The day I die, drifting is probably one of the best motorsports that has ever come about. I've also been shooting for Stacked on Track. Uh, Stacked on Track is a really, really cool event that's uh, pretty much like time trials and time attack. Uh, but it starts off at a beginner level where you can go there with zero experience. You can drive on the track whether you are have zero experience or a ton of experience. It's an awesome track day. It's super cost effective. Uh, they have instructors there to help you drive. And it's just an awesome way to get on track at some of these tracks that normally you wouldn't be able to just hop up on. So uh, Palmer Motorsports Park was one of the tracks. Um, that's an amazing track. Now, the only thing I don't like about Palmer is that as far as photography goes and being media friendly is it's not. You can shoot turn one, two, and I think three in the main area. Uh, and that's really it. Anything else on the track, any other turn on the track, you have to get in this shuttle bus, which is like jam packed with people. That's if you even have a spot on there you can get on. And they have to drop you off at a single flag station. So whatever flag station you get dropped off at, you are there until lunchtime or the end of the day. So that's it. So you can't go hopping from different flag stations. There's no way to walk around. There's nothing. It's either you shoot that beginning section of the track or you sit at a flag station for the entire day and you don't move. And that is it. So, I mean, Palmer's a beautiful track. Um, it's amazing. The drivers love it. It's a lot of elevation change. But, however, until they really fix that, I don't think it's really going to be enjoyable from a photography aspect where, you know, I feel like every other track that kind of has something down for media, like there's, there's at least a protocol and they, they make it so... Everyone can get pictures and everyone can work around and they can work creatively, but there's no creativity at Palmer, unfortunately, media aspect. Uh, it is relatively a very new track, so I hope, you know, sometime down the road they will fix that and kind of get like a game plan going, but as of right now, just trying to do the best I can at the track and I think the pictures came out pretty good. It's, you know, a beautiful background and usually awesome cars anyway, so it's kind of hard to mess it up. I shot uh, Pocono. With Stacked, uh, Pocono is a, a great track. I mean, it's iconic. They use it for NASCAR, and it's 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 pretty awesome. They are very media friendly, so you know, obviously a bunch of great angles. Uh, you got you know your your main sweeper turns that you would use, or your bank turns that you, they would use for NASCAR. They usually implement that in the Stacked Motorsports uh, tracks. Uh, I believe the last event that I shot there was the half track or the North Course, as they call it. 
and it's it's amazing it's awesome there's you know plenty of high speed and then plenty of technicality too which is nice um the next time i will be going back there in august i'll be shooting the mega course where they actually take both you know track configurations and they use it at one time so it's going to be pretty sick i'm going to go over with a bunch of memory cards and i'm just going to you know slam out coverage for them and it's going to be a great time i love pocono i'll shoot pocono any day of the week it's sick and you know obviously they got cool cars to come out there there was a um there was a radical there last time um from far away i thought it was like a uh, like a lmp1 car lmp2 car and i got up close and saw it was a radical and that's sick because i've only seen radicals in like forza or like gran turismo or games like that i've never actually seen one in person and it was really dope like it's it's really just like a race car for the track like that's it like it's practically like an lmp2 car but with less power it's I, i'm pretty sure you had a high boost motor in it it was dope I really dig it. Uh, I had a fun time shooting it. It was something different, and uh, it was fast. I'm pretty sure it was the fastest car of the day. So, I mean, that's an awesome track toy. Uh, then, of course, I went back to Club Loose, and I shot uh, Pro Brodan. Uh, Pro Brodan was awesome because I don't really get to see a lot of the pros. Uh, I know a lot of people that shoot media for Club Loose, they also do follow a team or a driver for uh, Formula Drift, in which I do not really had the opportunity to kind of get my foot into Formula Drift, which I'm trying to actively do now. I am looking for a driver or a team to shoot for, for the 2022 Formula Drift season. So if you are looking for a photographer, whether it be for a single event or whether it be for the entire series following you for that season, please keep me in mind. You can reach out to me at McKendra Media on Instagram, or you can email me, mckendramedia at outlook.com. I would really just like to get out there on track. Uh, Formula Drift and Drifting is my absolute favorite motorsport, and with me doing automotive photography as a career full time, is really the area that I should be pushing towards, and it's definitely the event that I want to be a part of. I got to see a lot of drivers that I don't normally get to see, uh, you know, all across the country. Um, you know, I got to see um, Vaughn Gittin Jr., which he's usually a regular there. Chris Forsberg was there with the uh, Ultimaniac. I didn't get to get any pictures of that because, of course, uh, my one battery died and I was switching batteries out and it was like the only lap he did on the whole track in the car was when I, of course, had to switch batteries out. So that's my luck. Uh, awesome car, though. The thing is absolutely insane. It's so loud. Which anyone that was there uh, for Formula Drift came over to Pro Bar Down uh, the next day, which I thought was awesome to see the pros really... Uh, shredding with the local dudes and it was obviously a great time great photos um like i said man club loose is like the best place to go it's they literally call it the greatest place on earth because of that you know exact reason like everyone there is awesome i've never met a single person from club loose that i have not liked everyone's super down to earth they're really cool people uh you'll always have a great time there and if you haven't gone out yet just go out for any event doesn't even matter what event it is just go out it's such a great time I have plenty of events coming up in the future that I'm shooting. I'm shooting the rest of the Club Loose season all the way out, except for I think maybe one event because it conflicts with the Stacked on Track uh, event. But I will be shooting Stacked on Track all the way for the rest of the season. Also, uh, one of my good friends from SCCA, Josh, uh, invited me out to an event called Snakes on the Mountain. And I did not really know what this event was going to be. Uh, he said that there was Vipers involved and, uh, you know, Dodge Vipers are one of my absolute all-time favorite cars, so I had to go and check it out. I'm glad I did, because it was the most awesome, ridiculous thing I have ever seen in my life. Uh, we show up to this random house in Lehigh Valley, a huge house on a fucking mountain, okay? Going up this winding driveway, and by the time we get up to the top, I notice that there is a bunch of brand new Ford GTs, including old Ford GTs, and there are like one of one or like one of 25 vipers there there's a legitimate ferrari formula one car and the dude drove it there because <laughs> he lives like down the street and it was it was just such a gnarly event two heritage edition four gts one was in that beautiful golf uh livery and the other one was in the beautiful white with the carbon fiber uh, then there was also, I, I haven't really figured out what it is. I've been looking online. If any of you guys know from the pictures uh, what it is, but it looks like what would be a 24-hour Le Mans pace car. Uh, I looked online to see if they ever had a pace car or a safety car uh, that was a 4GT, and I have not found that. Uh, so if any of you guys know, but the car is sick regardless. I mean, it's a 4GT, so, I mean, it's amazing. Uh, there was an actual... Uh, 
Shelby Cobra in the person's basement. Like, they literally had a car in their house, and it was an original uh, Cobra. And it, it's, I don't think I'm ever going to see one of them in my life again, unless I go back to that one. So, to see a car like that was amazing, because they are literally so far and few between being real, and it was a real authentic one, and I am kind of mind blown still. I, I haven't really been able to grasp the concept of how ridiculous that really was. I've also done uh, some more light painting shoots at nighttime. Uh, you guys know that I really enjoy light painting, especially in the city. The city holds some of the best coloring and just like lively feels, and I... I love it. I love shooting uh, any kind of light painting in the city. So um, Dave Lugo uh, wanted to do a shoot in his Honda Element. Uh, his Honda Element is sick. It's literally uh, it's slammed on the ground. I mean, literally the front lip is on the ground. And um, he's got clutch wheels on it, and it's so sick. It's so unique. I don't see Honda Elements with like, really anything done to him, but his is so sick. I love shooting this car. I see it in person all the time, so I'm happy I really got the time to actually dedicate an actual shoot to this uh, Honda Element. And uh, I wanted to do it at Penn's Landing with the, the Ferris wheel on. You know, I wanted to do it up top on the bridge uh, to kind of get the Ferris wheel on the city in the background and then bring it down to the parking lot and then get really close up pictures of the Ferris wheel. Unfortunately, uh, the only day that we went there, Penn's Landing decided to close early for the holiday. So I got one picture with the Ferris wheel on in the background and I was pretty bummed about that. We kind of got some like after hours kind of feel shots and kind of try to change the mood up to kind of deal with the circumstances that we were put under um, just to, you know, adapt and evolve into the situation. And they still came out awesome and I really like it. And, uh, you know, Dave loved the pictures and, um, you know, I always love to <laughs> experiment, things like that, you know. It's one thing I've learned about photography is, you know, things happen and they don't always work out as planned but it's nice to execute still and uh, put forth your best effort to make the best out of the situation that you were in. And in this circumstance, I feel like it came out a lot better than I thought and I'm very happy with the outcome. I also did a little Q&A on Instagram, so I'll answer a couple of your questions now. Question number one was, what is my dream car to do a photo shoot of? Uh, so my all time dream car to do a photo shoot of would probably be my favorite manufacturer of cars and that would probably be any Pagani um, whether it be a Wyra or a Zonda it does not matter Paganis are the most beautiful cars on this planet they are handcrafted uh, they're very exquisite and I would love to let alone see one in person but do a photo shoot of one uh, absolute favorite cars of all time and I would be absolutely honored to shoot one of them one day. Second question is, what inspired me to start photography? So it's a pretty interesting subject actually. Um, I didn't really start photography because I wanted to necessarily start photography. Um, I always liked photography, uh, but I never had any real interest into pursuing it on my own. Um, however, one day uh, my buddy Nick Chandler actually wanted to go to Club Loose for a drifting event. And uh, I also wanted to do it, but my S14 was not running. And I was like incredibly broke at this point in my life. I worked at like a grocery store and I really did not have my life together and I could not afford to fix my barely broken S14. So, um, you know, I still wanted to go, I wanted to support him. And uh, I actually was given the idea of, hey, why don't you go take pictures, you know, since you won't be running. And I was like, yeah, I could do that for sure, you know? Um, so I actually borrowed someone else's camera. My buddy Chris's sister's camera um, to just do photography for the event. That's how I really started photography, uh, was at Club Loose. Um, they, you know, were super cool about it. You know, they accepted a media pass for me. I went out there, um, you know, obviously they showed me uh, what are the do's and the don'ts. Uh, this is what you're supposed to do and I went out there and had a great time and being out there for the first time not even expecting it to be what it was and I kind of instantly fell in love with it I thought it was the coolest thing I've ever done in my life and I was like this is sick now obviously later on in life I chose to try to go the uh, race car driver route instead of pursuing photography which 
you know, we all live and learn, but now I know both sides of the spectrum. So I know the photography aspect and the driving car and building aspect. And it didn't work out as I planned. At that point in time, I was making decent money. However, it was more of like a uh, money time management kind of deal and kind of throwing some life issues in there to mix a nice little, you know, cauldron of BS. Um, so I decided to stop racing. Um, you know, I had my EK Coupe that I ran in Global Time Attack. Uh, for limited class and I was building it for a limited class and then I also ran my G80 Genesis sedan in enthusiast class in global time attack and they kind of dabbled in some SCCA and uh, you know a couple times when I couldn't run um, I would go out and do photography heats that I was not running my car I would go out on track and I would do photography and uh, at that point in time I was kind of just like you know what I honestly enjoy the photography more than the racing cars. I don't have to worry about the stress of, you know, is my car going to blow up this run or, you know, paying attention to, you know, my my car's consumables, whether it be tires or brakes or anything like that. And, you know, I still get to enjoy motorsports to the fullest extent. I really uh, like the idea of telling other people's stories, showcasing other people's cars because me going through that myself, I know how hard it is. I know how difficult it is to make it out to these events and get these cars finished. And, you know, I, I, I really feel what the drivers are going through since I've done, you know, I've gone through it personally. And uh, it just helps me appreciate the culture more. And I really feel like, you know, going through the struggle on both aspects kind of really woven the path of what I do now. So thanks for checking back in. Uh, I'm going to do this uh, monthly rather than weekly. I know uh, the last episode I said I wanted to do it weekly, but... My uh, kind of been picking up uh, a lot of work, um, so with the editing uh, load from doing the events, uh, doing the vlogs every week might not be beneficial. And plus, me doing it once a month rather than once a week, it kind of allows you guys to get more in the single vlog rather than just like little bits of whatever I can pull together in a week. You can check in with me next month, and I love to hear from you guys. Check out my Instagram at McKendry Media. Um, subscribe to the page, like the video, comment, let me know what you think. Whether it be digital automotive photography or film, because you know now I'm branching into film, so some of you film heads can kind of put in some input, and I would appreciate that. You know, constructive criticism is the best sometimes. So thank you guys. Take it easy.